You talked about uh, Bill Cosby when you were doing Meteor Man. Uh -huh. Did you have a relationship with, with Bill after that? Bill, uh, you know, Dr. Cosby, I'm going to call him by his real moniker. Dr. Cosby is a class act. When I was first starting on the Malcolm Nettie show, he called me over to the set of his show. And he said, yes, I hear you had cancer also. I said, yes, July 15th. He said, I want you to sit down and study. It's obviously you're great, we all know it, but you got to learn the business, Eddie, right? So I would go there literally for a week and study, and at the end of every rehearsal, he says, so what did you notice? I said, I noticed you would take the script, put it up on his feet, and then bring it to life, but add in your flavor. You didn't go just by the script, you knew the map, but you got there your own way, because once you get it on your feet and you actually interplaying with the other actor, mm -hmm. other shit's gonna come out. Yeah. Right? The small little nuances that you can't write a certain look, you know what I mean? A hand gesture, shit like that, right? So I'm watching that. And he was smoking study, uh, his little stogie nigga, and laugh afterwards. Yeah, it's just smart, it's smart. I like that. You know, we need more with brains, right? <laughs> so, uh, which helped me, you know, transitioning from just stand up where I can say whatever the fuck I want to say. And then they had this little nigga off the streets, you know, a hundred plus thousand dollars a fucking week and then put constraints on the motherfucker. I felt like I was handcuffed every motherfucking week on that show. Mm -hmm. It was a living hell for me. So, uh, but you know, uh, uh, Dr. Cosby helped me out with that shit. What do you think? You know, your take on what happened with Bill Cosby with the allegations and everything else like that? Look, first off, you have to remember uh, this was in the 70s. Right? I'm old enough to remember the 70s. The 70s is a different time. Right? The 70s motherfuckers all had Coke spoons around their fucking necklace. Mm. You go to the damn disco, nigga, the line is laid out on the table. Toot, toot. Right? Yeah. When you you want to level out after a hit of cocaine, you get a quaalude. Right? Yeah. So did he rape these bitches? All of them said the same thing. We went to the room. Why would you go to the room of a known married man? Right. Number one. Me, me they're, they're down to fuck anyways. Why would you go to a room, a hotel room, of a known married man. And he incorporates this whole marriage thing in his comedy routines. And it's not a secret that he's married. You understand me. Okay. So they, they're down to fuck. Then they go back 30 years later and say, he raped me. 30 years. I don't understand that. I mean, that's like a motherfucker robbing me. And then I wait 30 years to call the police. I got robbed. 30 years ago. In 1984. Right, because if you notice, there, there was no... And it's him! <laughs> <laughs> because it, it's past the statute of limitations, so there's no, there's no criminal charge. There is a systematic effort to destroy every black male entertainment's, entertainer's image. They want us all to have an actress by a name. Kobe raped a white woman in Colorado. Dr. Cosby raped 37 bitches and is still counting. Nobody leaves this business clean. Michael Jackson, fuck little white children. Michael Jordan? Michael Jordan gambled. Mm, right, and then his dad got killed. And you they, understand? They tried to tie that. You're not going to die clean. I mean, everything that Bill Cosby has built up, the, the decades of work that, that he stood behind. The man has, you know, single-handedly you know, sent a bunch of brothers and sisters to college. Yeah. You know, even if he didn't pay for it himself, he gave them the idea that it's possible, right? The motherfucker was so generous with his money, he bought colleges colleges. I, I you know, understand me? I, I know that I, I've seen some interviews. And then some pussy is supposed to tear that down. Like, I, I have seen some interviews with... Let's talk about yeah. this little motherfucking white boy who's a known motherfucking pedophile, the director, that escaped overseas. What's oh. that motherfucker's name? Uh, 
Roman Polanski? Yeah, I don't see them fucking with that motherfucker. Well, I mean, he's... Oh, he's back at work. Yeah, he's back at work. He's like in Sweden or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had to flee the country. Yeah. I mean... You I, understand I, me? He got to flee the country. Right. Michael Jackson might have wanted to flee the country. Yeah. He didn't get to flee. There's a difference. Well, Michael Jackson was ultimately found innocent, though. All three of the little motherfuckers came on. They're adults now. You can count them on, uh, on the internet. Yeah. Saying it never motherfucking happened. Yeah. Our parents put us up to to try to get right. money out there. I think one of them. Did I, mainstream media ever pick that truth up and put so it much. out there? One of them actually, I think, killed himself at one point, I think. Well, one, of the, one of the accusers or some shit like that. Yeah. Because his conscience done fucked him up. Yeah. You can't run away from yourself. Everywhere you go, there you are. Well, one of your famous routines was Michael Jackson on crack. Yes. How that was that? one of his favorite jokes. Okay, so you, you and Michael I talked about Mike that? I knew Mike very well. So Michael he was Jackson. a very deep brother. What was the Michael Jackson on crack routine like? I said, anybody that fucked their face up like that got to be on something. Who knew it was profile? You thought it was crack. Hey. Okay. So Michael Jackson actually approached you at one point, or you approached him, or how did that work? It was actually at Neverland. <laughs> you went to his house? Yes. Okay. There was some kind of event going on and uh, I knew a friend of the family okay. so they brought me out to the house and then Michael found out I was out there I was out with my kids and they enjoying the Neverland shit so one of the dudes came out and said uh, Mr. Jackson would like to meet you I think they talking about Joe I know Papa Joe from out here in Vegas yeah. mm -hmm. so I thought he was talking about Joe he's like no Michael wants to meet you I'm like nigga shit so I'm nervous like a motherfucker, nigga. I'm like, shit. You've been nigga. talking shit about it. Yeah, did you see the joke and shit? <laughs> so he has a healthy sense of humor. He said, that's one of my favorite jokes. So anyway, we got to talking and found out we both got elastic imaginations and shit. You know. And uh, first time we met, uh, the second time was in uh, Miami. He was out there recording or something. And it was like a five, six star hotel. And we walked in this motherfucker. Michael rented out six floors. <laughs> okay. Nobody can get close to this nigga. Right. Never comes in the front door, always comes in the service entrance. So, uh, me and Damon Coke Daniels, uh, we wrote uh, My Baby Daddy together. Mm -hmm. So, I take him out there because we're going to do the script. So, we open the door. And I'm expecting security to be there right this way, Mr. Jackson. Here. Michael opens the door, he had the tape on his nose. He's like, yeah, come on in. Coke just sitting there. Can't move, I'm like, nigga, come on in. <laughs> so Michael's sitting on the bed, he's like, you want something to drink? I said, yeah, I'll take some champagne. You know, Coke, like, I just, I just had some water. He's nervous, can't even talk, right? So uh, anyway, we got the bouncing ideas and shit. And my brother runs out the room, he's like, nigga, I can't believe y'all motherfuckers just finished each other's sentences and shit. So Michael's like, sit on the bed. I'm like, nigga, that's how you got in trouble. Sit on the bed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you're making pedophile jokes. <laughs> like a motherfucker. And, and how, like, how is he taking those he's jokes? He's a real nigga. He, he's, I think the reason he liked me because I would just talk to him like a regular person. Right. Now, a I, lot I, of people around him would just kiss his ass. Yes, Mr. Jackson, yes. I'm like, nigga, you ain't the only motherfucker that can moonwalk. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, uh, and he was just a real, real motherfucker with a healthy sense of humor, nigga. He can set your ass up. Yeah, I, I heard Mike was kind of gangster. Like, I heard Mike would, like, beat up his monkey every so often. Let me put it like this. You know what's gangster? I own Sony's publishing. Mm. Every time Beyonce and Jay-Z make a song, Michael was getting a check. I bought the Beatles. Yeah. While I'm doing the video with the Beatle. That's gangster. Right. With Michael Paul, Walls with, with Paul McCartney. With Paul McCartney. If you're going to sell the Beatles, how much you sell them for? Oh, I don't know, you know, about 60 million. Wow, that's a lot of money. That motherfucker go right to his trailer, get his people on the phone. Paul don't find out till the next fucking day Michael done bought the Beatles. That motherfucker come on and say, how can you buy Beatles? How can you buy Beatles? <laughs> he said 60, I gave you 64. That's a lot of money. <laughs> the girl is mine. <laughs> Your publishing's mine. This nigga's a gangster, nigga. <laughs> Michael Jackson was gangster. You don't make a billion dollars being no punk motherfucker. Yeah. Uh, I remember I had uh, had this long conversation with um, Ronnie Newt. You know that one? 
Ronnie Newt. Ronnie Newt was a, well, he was a gangster from the Bay Area, but he had a group called the Neutrons. I remember the Neutrons. Yeah, the Neutrons. Those were his kids, actually. All right. And uh, I, I remember he was uh, originally, I think, signed to Joe Jackson. So he was around Michael Jackson. He had pictures of, you know, he was wearing the glove at his house and stuff like that. And, and I remember he showed me this picture. He said, listen, this is a picture of my son at Michael Jackson's house in his underwear. I took this picture myself. They tried to pay me 100000 to say that Michael Jackson molested my son, you know, and use this picture as evidence. Mm -hmm. I said, let me tell you something. If Michael Jackson molested my son, I would have killed Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson never touched my son. Uh, nigga, and Bubbles. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody would have made it. Right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, he said, all that was bullshit. I knew that from Jump Street. I was the only celebrity that went to court with the nigga the first day. Mm. Yeah. You actually went to court with him during, yes, I the, did. during the whole. The nigga rode in my limo. He was so nervous he didn't book a car. Mm. I drove from my house in Malibu at the time down to Neverland. And him, Catherine was in the car. And uh, I think it was Jermaine. And we pulled up, and they had the fucking red carpet rolled out at the courthouse. <laughs> Rows of motherfucking cameras. I'm like, nigga, is this a movie for me or a court date? Yeah. And Michael was nervous, nigga. I was like, this ain't nothing but a hearing. Yeah. I said, I haven't been to court when I'm figuring out how much time I'm getting. Yeah. You walk in and say guilty or not guilty, and you walk the fuck out. Yeah. And the nigga walked out, jumped on top of the SUV, and yeah. started dancing for the fucking fans. I remember that. The judge was mad talking about we late. If there's 10,000 people on the fucking street, we in the car, we on time, we can't get through the motherfuckers till the police show up and move the crowd out the way. Right. But he's a G. He stood up in that courtroom, niggas, not guilty, and did a dance move, nigga. <laughs>